budget, Japan. It often feels like those two words don't go very well alongside each other, like salmon and chocolate, or British and happy. And yet, over the last decade, traveling Japan has gotten a lot cheaper, partly thanks to a recent construction boom in hotels catering to overseas tourists, and especially thanks to a completely worthless yen. And when it comes to dining out here, your money really can go a long way, with mouth-watering dishes prepared with fresh ingredients easily found for under a thousand yen, about eight dollars or six pounds. The absence of a tipping culture certainly helps on the wallet as well. So in this video, let's discover 12 amazing, delicious dishes and restaurants where you can find a hearty meal for a thousand yen or less and see how much bang for your buck you can really get while traveling around Japan. Boy, am I going to be absolutely stuffed by the end of this video. From noodles and sushi to burgers and curry, you might be surprised by the sheer variety of mouth-watering options you can find around Japan with some familiar brands and some you may never heard of before. By the end of our reasonably priced culinary odyssey, we'll have gone everywhere from train stations and basements to bustling downtown street corners. And we begin our journey with the restaurant you can find on every street corner, Sakia. Home of the Gyudon Beef Bowl and Japan's second biggest fast food chain, with 2,000 stores nationwide serving up disturbingly good value for money. So when it comes to fast food restaurants in Japan, there are three big chains that dominate. Skia, Matsuya and Yoshinoya. My favourite is Skia because of one particular bowl topped with cheese, as I'm about to show you in a minute. But it's fast filling and actually bloody delicious. So let's go and check it out. Come with me. Sukiya, Matsuya and Yoshinoya. Some people swear by one or the other, but the truth is they're all pretty damn good. Matsuya is often marginally cheaper than the other two. Yoshinoya is said to have the best gyudon sauce in the world, whereas Skia is famous for its variety of toppings. And if you're like me, a gluttonous cheese fiend, you'll no doubt be won over by the gyudon with three kinds of cheese. Oh yes. Look at that bad boy. Gyudon smothered in a bucket of cheese. This is the reason I like skier. I used to eat this a lot. I got like weirdly addicted to this many years ago. When I was trying to lose weight before the original journey across Japan, I would walk 20,000 steps every day. And at the end of my 20,000 steps, when I was basically limping through Sendong, <laughs> I would come in here to skier and devour a bowl of this. Probably offsetting some of the great work I'd done, burning off those calories walking. But I needed that. I needed to know I was gonna get this at the end of it to have the motivation to power on through. Oh, all right, admittedly, the somewhat microwaved beef isn't the best quality and it can get a little stringy at times. But after being marinated in sweet, savoury sauce and served alongside chopped onions, it's a hearty comfort food and an absolute steal for 580 yen a bowl. While gyudon is reliable fast food, it lacks a diversity of flavours. After all, melted cheese can only take you so far, though it pains me to admit it. Fortunately though, our next dish comes in a variety of flavours across the country, making it almost impossible to ever get tired of. With its braised pork, rich broth and bright yellow noodles, next up is ramen. So this is Sendai Core, literally child of Sendai. It's my favorite ramen shop in town. It might not be the most picturesque ramen, but it is the most delicious. Look at that, thick koteri style broth. Two types of broth in Japan, koteri and asari. Asari is kind of transparent and clear, and koteri, very thick, like this one here. Oh, God, it's so good. It's like drinking pure gravy. And the best thing of all, this bowl of chashu ramen, with all this pork here, is 990 yen. Absolute bargain. While this bowl of ramen was 990 yen due to the extra helping of braised pork, sorry, I couldn't help myself. A typical bowl of ramen in Japan clocks in around 650 to 800 yen, with more so-called premium restaurant chains such as Ichiram charging up to 980 yen for a standard bowl and then cashing in on the toppings. It's a right cheeky rip-off considering in Tokyo you can grab a bowl of Michelin star ramen topped off with white truffle oil, no less, for an incredible 1,000 yen. Now that is some serious value for money. Go fuck yourself. For me, ramen is something of a once a month guilty pleasure because I do feel pretty damn guilty when I've had it. It is very salty, it's very fatty, but I think in terms of pure value for money, ramen is a solid nine out of 10 because this is so damn filling. We've also got these delicious looking gyoza, crispy, juicy. I can't fit them in my budget because this was 990 yen, so I'm gonna gift these to the nice cameraman. You know, no hungry mouths go left unfed on an abroad in Japan sheep. <laughs> but seriously, hurry up and eat them or you're fired. We're, a bit, we're late today because of you, because of everything you've done. Eat them, eat the gyoza. So I've actively been dreading this next place more than any other on the list. It is unfortunately very good value for money and it is Saizeria, the family Italian restaurant. 
Ah, let's go. Oh, God forbid, I hate this place so much. Japan does family restaurants pretty damn well. You're practically spoiled for choice between Denny's, Coco's, Gusto, and my personal favourite, Royal Host. All come with food menus bigger than the Bible, and drinks so cheap it practically feels like thievery. For as little as 230 yen, you can drink all the soft drinks and coffee your heart desires. Some family restaurants are on the higher end, such as Royal Host, where the food is top-notch, but a little pricey, with an average meal clocking in around 1,500 to 2,000 yen. Other family restaurants specialise in certain foods, such as Bikuri Donkey, literally Surprise Donkey, which specialises in Hamburg steaks drenched in cheese. <laughs> My uh, second favourite after Royal Host. And while Gusto is the largest family chain with 1,300 locations nationwide, the cheapest and most bang for your buck option is Saizeria, serving up so-called Italian-style food with prices so cheap they look like a bloody printing error, starting in particular with the wine. <laughs> 100 yen wine. How can that be? How could that be drinkable? Seriously, are we going to try it? You bet we are. I get the impression size areas aimed at younger folks, not because of the artwork, but if you take a look around, I can't see anybody in here who's over 19 years old. So I feel like I've come to like a children's birthday party or something. A children's birthday party with a hundred yen wine. Intriguing. In a plastic beaker, no less. Tanaka mass. Oh, oh. That is interesting, in a sort of shit way. I noticed they didn't pour it a little bit and let me sort of taste it, like, oh, there's fruity undertones. They just sort of slapped the beaker of wine down in front of me. Has all the sensibilities of paint stripper. I don't know whether to drink it or use it to redecorate my studio. Mm. Drunk on cheap wine, I order the 400 yen margarita pizza and the carbonara pasta for 500. After all, how bad can they really be? Well, it turns out they're so bad, the waiting staff simply refused to bring them over. Interestingly, our first dish to come out was one we didn't even order. And they seem to have brought us some sort of battered shrimp. Ah. Well, there we go, it's been robbed from me just as I was about to eat it. But instead, we have our margarita pizza. Look at that. Doesn't that look appetizing, viewers? Don't you just want to tuck into that? Honestly, if you serve this to an Italian person, they'd probably punch you in the face. Look at it. Anyway, here we go. Oh no, the dough is like chewing gum. The cheese is really, really salty, not in a good way. And the tomato is this sort of flavorless, disgusting mess. It makes even microwave pizza seem like Michelin star food. Like this is nothing short of an atrocity. But the pasta's arrived as well. So let's tuck into that. Like, it's got this really weird, bitter smell to it. Look at that. Jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. Egg on top there. At the end of the day, don't judge a book by its cover. Don't judge a carbonara by its horribly bitter, acrid smell. No. No. This is an insult to the people of Italy. I think we're like the only people in here really eating anything. Everyone else is just using the free drink bar. We're the only ones stupid after all of this stuff. Value for money, it's probably a 10 out of 10. But for quality, for taste, it's a one. It's a one out of 10. There are other places that are better than this, and we should have gone there. But you don't get red wine there, like you do here. So, swings and roundabouts. Now, I realize not everybody watching this video might be able to come to Japan and try the food and snacks for yourself featured in this video. But what if there was a way? Well, there is because today's sponsor is Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. The monthly snack box is packed full of confectionery from around the country. <laughs> While Tokyo Treat focuses on popular Japanese sweets with limited edition items such as Sakura Pepsi and Sake Kit Kats, Sakura Co. serves up more traditional, artisanal snacks from around the country, supporting local sweet companies. And given it's cherry blossom season, perhaps unsurprisingly, this month's theme is Sakura. And it starts with a booklet revealing how all of the snacks are made and where they come from, complete with allergy information. Honest to God, I don't know how they fit so much stuff in these boxes. As I always say, it's like they've broken physics to fit it all in. I'm gonna indulge in some Sakura jellies. Ooh. Mm. Mm. Look at that. We also have these uh, Shiso Senbei crackers. Let's try these. Very nice. Not only is it packed full of crackers, sweets, snacks, but also crockery to have my tea on, because that's right, it also comes with sakura flavoured tea, cherry blossom tea. Ah, delicious. 
But whether you'd like to indulge in all this for yourself or give it as a gift and be the best friend in the world, you can find out more details to Tokyo Treat and Sakura's Sakura Special Spectacular Seasonal Wonder Box in the description box below. Check it out. Back to the video. Mm. I like that. I've been looking forward to this next place perhaps more than any other. You don't get quite as much flavor, quite as good value for your money as Coco Ichibanya. As the mantra always says, good smell, good curry. Let's go and find out. Japan's biggest curry franchise has over 1,400 stores nationwide. With the aroma of the curry wafting through the air down the street, sneakily and subconsciously reeling you in long before you spot it. And at that point, it's already too late. You belong to Coco Ichibanya now, and their tantalizingly personalized menu of mouth-watering flavors and spices. Look at the options here. How overwhelming is that? Pork curry, beef curry, you can change your portion of rice, but it's the spice level people get excited about the most. If you are a maniac, you can go as far as spice number 10, and you'll be carried out here and put in an ambulance. While Coco Ichibanya might not have the cheapest cat's curry around, in some places you can find it as low as 500 yen. Here, the rich flavor and quality of the pork is simply unbeatable for the price point, especially if you throw my old friend cheese into the equation. <laughs> Look at that beautiful, thick, creamy curry with dollops of cheese sprinkled in. Beautiful, beautifully spiced. I actually kind of regret not getting a spicy one, to be honest. I only know one man who could handle level 10 spice. He's dead now, but he died doing what he loved. Mm. In terms of bang for your buck, very filling meal, very good. Quite possibly my favorite thing on this entire list. Curry, it's often there to save you at the end of a long day. Good smell, good curry. You need to stop saying that tagline. Until now, everything on our list has been a restaurant. Time then for a street food that's beloved throughout Japan. Simple, savoury, and so damn hot it'll scorch your mouth no matter how long you wait for the bloody things to cool down. Next up, it's takoyaki, fried octopus balls. There is no food in Japan that I've burnt my mouth on more times than takoyaki. The batter, so hot and gooey, it's fresh off the grill. Drizzled with mayonnaise and sticky sweet Worcester sauce. Fish flakes eerily blowing in the wind. It almost looks like they're alive. It's had a mm. Oh God. Oh, oh. Mm. I waited a solid five minutes for this to cool down. To no avail. It still incinerated my mouth. Scientists are currently trying to find the conditions, the perfect conditions to ignite fusion, right? Using lasers and heat and energy. They needn't look further than a takoyaki stand in Sendai. A trillion degrees centigrade. The power of the sun in the palm of my hand. Well, but given that this was just 560 yen and it could keep you full for half the day, it's probably a nine out of 10 in terms of value for money. Deliciousness, well that, that's a solid 10 out of 10. I know a lot of people might be put off by the fact it's octopus, right, inside, but don't, it is really nice. The first time I had it, I was like, oh, octopus, mm, not sure about that. But by the second time, I was fine. By the third time, I was in love. <laughs> All right, so you probably couldn't survive a whole week living off of takoyaki alone, though I'd be keen to find out. So let's consider a more well-rounded alternative. This next one I almost avoided putting on the list altogether, as you don't typically associate sushi with value for money. However, there are certain conveyor belt restaurant chains that aren't too harsh on your pocket money. So let's go inside a Kaiten Sushi restaurant and see how far we can make a thousand yen really go. 690 yen for the Magaro Zakushi set. Look at that, beautiful. All the different cuts of Magaro. Over here we've got salmon. This was about 110 yen. <laughs> the joke bargain price. And also the uh, tamagoyaki fried egg, also 110 yen. All of this for under 1,000 yen, I think. My math isn't very good. Question is, how edible is it really? Especially as the reviews for this place were 2.9 stars out of five on Google. Four out of five, whimsical business. Worryingly low for Japan. You never see it that low. Let's find out why. Not bad, actually. The rice is quite decent. It, it doesn't taste as fresh as normal, but it's actually not as bad as I thought. It's still better than British sushi. Rather surprised. This is the Otoro fatty tuna, the most expensive prized tuna. Actually not that bad, yeah. Is it good? No. But is it edible? Yes. I thought this was going to be like a two out of ten. It's more close to a five. Something about it, it's a bit too flavourless. Something not quite going on there. But for the most part, to a British tourist coming here, I think, this would be a life-changing experience. Which is kind of sad when you think how much better sushi can be compared to this. I think if you just ate this and you walked out of here, you'd still be hungry afterwards. So for that alone, I'm going to give it about a five or a six. Six out of ten. 
Although maybe it was a case of speaking too soon, as I hadn't eaten the last piece. That was really horrible. Alright. Oh. <laughs> oh dear. But if you are going to splash out on one good meal on your trip to Japan, do make it sushi. It is one of those dishes where you can genuinely taste a huge difference when it comes to the quality of the ingredients. Not like our next option, where it pretty much tastes the same the whole world over. Gosh, what is this fine establishment? Mc McDonald's? Mc McDonald's? Let's go and take a look. So you might hate me right now for featuring McDonald's, but the truth is the fast food chain is arguably Japan's most popular fast food option. Operating the most restaurants in the country, with 2,900 stores nationwide, a whopping 1,000 more than even Sakir. But as someone who's never set foot in McDonald's, I find myself drawn to the more exotic Japanese items on the menu. What is this? The McDonald's Japan menu is subtly different. You know, most people cite the good old sloppy mess that is the teriyaki burger, which to be honest, I'm not a fan of, people swear by it, people die by it, but the real one that you should come for is the Samurai Mac. They released this about two years ago, two different burgers, each one representing two warring samurai factions, and it proved really popular because the burgers are kind of soaked in soy sauce, and they are, for lack of a better word, delicious. I've eaten so much food today, I've run out of words. This is shaka shaka potato. Shaka shaka is an onomatopoeia, meaning to shake. And uh, what you do, Take your plain, bland, salty fries, stick them in the shaka shaka bag, add the ninniku garlic mayonnaise powder. Oh, look at that powdery goodness. You put it in the bag and then you shake it and it goes everywhere, all over the table, in your eyes. It's a fucking shit show by all accounts. And then you take out a fry. That tastes awful. Don't, don't get that one. Don't get the garlic sauce. Stick with the Samurai mat. But this was only about 800 yen, so very good value for money. Just avoid the shaka shaka potato. That was just, I just ruined some perfectly good fries. Shaka shaka bullshit. Still, McDonald's is McDonald's, and you didn't fly a million miles around the world for shaka shaka McFries. Uh, at least I hope you didn't. So let's go back to some authentic Japanese food. And next up is a personal favorite and a restaurant I generally visit once a week for a hearty bowl of udon noodles. With 800 stores nationwide, Marugame Semen is Japan's most popular udon franchise, serving up authentic sanuki udon from Kagawa Prefecture. Famed for the square shaped flat edges and satisfying chewiness, sanuki udon is made from a wheat flour and served in broth flavoured with dashi fish stock and niboshi sardines. It's a heavenly combination, rich in umami flavour, especially if you throw some additional tempura battered toppings into the mix which you can, given this hearty bowl of udon costs just over 500 yen. It's daylight robbery, I tell you. Robbery! Seriously, that is insane value for money. And the tempura, 180 yen per piece. And I'm going to dip that in there like that. Nice, crispy, ebby. A lot spicier than I thought it would be. Crikey. It wasn't supposed to be this way. In terms of bang for your buck, I think udon could be like a front runner in this whole video. It's a solid nine, maybe even a 10 out of 10. While udon might be formidable value for money, there's still one that's even better. The standing soba noodle restaurants you can find around Japanese train stations, such as this one in Sendai, where for 500 yen, not only do you get a piping hot bowl of soba noodles, but they come topped off with two chunky pieces of juicy fried chicken. How the bloody hell do they turn a profit? Soba noodles are a little bit bland, but when they're in soup, they really come into their own. Especially when they've got fried chicken with them as well. That, that kind of helps too. But for 500 yen, like, that's a 10 out of 10 for value. And uh, again, we're in a train station here, we're in Sendai Station. People run in here after work or before they've got to get on their train. You order it at the vending machine and it comes, like, this took about 30 seconds to prepare. I gave them the ticket, came over here and went straight back over the table to collect it. When it comes to fast food in Japan, it doesn't get faster than this. One thing I love about the standing soba restaurants is uh, you don't feel too full at the end of it. You know when you sit down and have a big meal and you're like, by the end of it. It's nice being, you know, stood up, helped with the digestion. Years ago, when I was uh, on journey across Japan, I bumped into a food fighter, a very really nice girl, who could eat a whole bucket of karaage chicken. And the way she got around it, her secret, was she would periodically stand up and jump up and down. And apparently that made the food go down her digestive system. So, so standing up at the sober restaurant, I feel the same. I'll just jump and soon I'll get arrested and deported. 
While we're here, there's another popular chain you can find at pretty much any major Japanese train station. It's a bit of a wild card and not something you'd necessarily associate with Japan. And it's, uh, well, it's bread. It's bread, isn't it? Look at this greasy compilation of baked goods. There's enough oil in here to power a 747 jumbo jet. I, I don't really eat this anymore. I've become a bit more health conscious over the years, shall we say. And nothing about a cheesy bacon quiche, a bacon stuffed panini, or curry bread, curry pan, uh, is, is anything that's, that's good for your body. But look at this, this is really popular. Look at that. Tasty curry within. Like in Japan, they can't just have simple baked bread, but they are good at ramming every baked good with as much cheese and cholesterol as possible. Bang for your buck, it's a solid eight out of 10. If you eat this, you'll be full for the next six hours, even though, let's face it, it's not the most well-balanced meal. If you're stuck in a station anywhere around Japan, odds are you can find a Vie de France, and uh, why not? It's a good place in the morning for breakfast. And if you like pesto, you're gonna love the paninis here. One honourable mention, particularly if you're staying in a location for an extended period of time, are supermarkets, where you can grab yourself a hearty bento for around 600 to 800 yen. The bentos are pretty well balanced between the rice, protein such as hamburgers, fish or chicken, and a mixture of vegetables and pickles. Personally, I'm not the biggest fan, as the freshness and flavour can be a bit of a letdown compared to everything else on this list. Let's face it, there's a reason I didn't bother eating this one on camera. But value for money, it is a great option, especially if you're a fan hold up in an Airbnb for several days. For our final option, we're journeying out into the evening air for a dining experience at the complete opposite end of the spectrum, and one that I am very, very happy to film. Oh yes. I'm not going to lie, going to an izakaya in Japan is a little bit expensive, certainly over a thousand yen for the most part, but there are some chains that are cheaper than others, like Hambe, the retro izakaya set in the 1960s. Come on inside, you're in for a treat on this one. In terms of value for money, this is unbeatable. Humber, the 1960s Shoah era Izakaya. This is all under a thousand yen. From the yakisoba and this massive sprawling plate of yakitori with chicken, pork, and cheese wrapped in bacon, to a chicken wing and all you can eat cabbage. Isn't this insane? A thousand yen. Crazy. And a single one of these tiny, teeny yakitori skewers is just 60 yen. This is the cheapest yakitori you can get in Japan, probably because it's ridiculously small. Tiny, but delicious. <laughs> One of the reasons the prices are so cheap in Hanbei is to reflect that exciting post-war era, when after a decade of rationing, cheap food was once again accessible for the masses. But to step in Hanbei is to go back in time with the posters, the music, the atmosphere. The only thing they need to work on is the English menu, which has some, uh, some questionable items on it, including priest octopus monster sausage, the eat or be eaten, cinnamon water of terror, oh. and my personal favorite, fly like a scallop. It's not quite fly like an eagle, and I'll be damned if I know what it is, because I'm not going to order it. But if you come to Humber, eat the food, and enjoy the English menu. Endless free entertainment. And the good news is the franchise can be found throughout Japan. I think there are meals that will fill you up more, like ramen maybe, but this is still one of the best we've had in the entire video. It's got the atmosphere to match it. Highly recommend Humber, amazing place. Great music too. Well guys, there you have it, 12 amazing dishes and restaurants to try for under a thousand yen. But which ones do we miss? Which ones do you want to try the most? Let us know in the comments down below. For me, I want to try laying down because I feel completely and utterly dreadful. We shot this entire video pretty much in one day and don't, don't ever try and do that. Don't fit 12 dishes into one day for the love of God. But for now guys, as always, for behind the scenes stuff, check out the Abroad Japan Patreon and I'll see you next time to do it all over again right back here on Abroad Japan. Bye for now. I need to go. I need to die. Oh. Look at them all having fun. You know why they're having fun? Because none of them were stupid enough to order the carbonara fucking pasta. That looks good. I don't know what that is. But as a meal, I think if you ate just this, you would walk out here wondering why there's soy sauce all over the table. Skier's my favourite, and I'm going to show you why right now with a bowl of my favourite gudon.